Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. I am deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. You are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. We are, we are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Three things, hallelujah. Love God, love people, love life. Amen. Focus on love God, love people, love life. You can never go wrong. As you walk through life journey, it has got its up and down. Good time, bad time. People love us. People offend us. People reject us. People favor us. It's part and parcel of everything. 
So, but just stay focused. The most important thing is love God, love people, love life. Amen. Every day you pray that prayer. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Amen. Discharge everything that is toxic in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. Amen. And live one day at a time and live it to the fullest. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's declare over yourself, I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God says I can do. It's amazing. Just the very thought, you know, that Christ would come. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He would come to this tiny little blue dot. And we are so insignificant in that tiny blue dot in the whole universe, whole galaxy. And yet, every one of us, we are the target of His love. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. And every day, He loaded us with His benefits to God be the glory. And He wants us to be aware that we are important to Him. And because of that, you know, I am who God says, I am. I have what God says, I have. And I can do what God says, I can do. All of us, the same thing. We are who God says, we are. We have what God says, we have. We can do what God says, we can do. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. This morning, I want to share with you what the Lord has laid upon my heart, still based on First Thessalonians chapter 5. But I'm going to start from this particular perspective. That is, rapture and the second coming. Sometimes we use this interchangeably and we are just wondering, what is this second coming and what is this rapture? You know what I'm saying? It's like, hmm, rapture is going up. Second coming is, he's coming for me. So what is it all about? And I want you to know that, you know, once we understand it and we will understand what Peter is trying to say, he says that, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation. Our salvation is more than just born again, got baptized in water, got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then come to church. It's more than that. Okay? So we can talk about that. Now I'm going to start with Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to verse 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Man of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Now this is the declarations of the angels. This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Talks about he is coming back. Okay? Now, the differences between rapture and second coming, we have to be very, very clear, okay? As a believer, what's the difference between rapture and second coming? Let's look at point number one. Rapture is meeting the Lord in the air. Second coming is returning with Him. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to verse 17. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we are who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. That is rapture. Okay? Second coming. Revelations 19, verse 14. It says, and the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on white horses. And so it's a total separate event. It's not one and the same. One is a rapture. The other one is what? Second coming. So there are two events all together. Okay? Now, uh, the next difference between rapture and second coming is one is before tribulation, one is after tribulation. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 tells us, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? That is before tribulation. And after tribulation, okay, there's a period called tribulation, then He will come. Revelation chapter 19, verse 17 to verse 18, Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. Then 
that you may eat the flesh of the kings, the flesh of the captains, the flesh of the mighty men, the flesh of the horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all the people, free and slave, small and great. Wow, that is after the tribulation. That means tribulation, it is a terrible time. Okay? Rapture happened before tribulation. Tribulation is a terrible, terrible time. Now, after this, Revelation 19, verse 17 to verse 18, then only second coming will take place. Okay? Thirdly, rapture has to do with deliverance, whereas second coming has to do with judgment. Now, because of time factor, I will only read a small portion, but we'll show you all the verse. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 17. Here it tells us about he comes, okay? And verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ rise first, then who we are alive and remain will be caught up together. That is rapture. Second coming means he comes to judge. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to verse 21. Again, it's very long. But I'm going to just start with verse 15. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with the iron rod. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, rapture is deliverance for the church, for the believers. Whereas, you know, second coming, it means judgment upon the earth. Fourthly, rapture is hidden. It just happened. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to verse 54. I only read from verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Can you just twinkle your eye? Ready, one, to go? Can you twinkle your eye? One more time, can you twinkle your eye? It happened that fast. That is rapture. Whereas... Second coming is Revelations 1-7. Behold, he is coming with clouds. Every eye will see him, even they who pierce him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. So, rapture is hidden, whereas second coming is seen by all. Lastly, rapture can happen any moment. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope, glorious appearing of our great God, and Saviour Jesus Christ. Okay? Anytime, any moment. However, second coming, there is certain event that has to take place. I have a couple of verses, but I will only read from verse 29. Okay? Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation, of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That is second coming. So to recap, five differences between rapture and second coming. Rapture, meeting in the air before tribulation. Is deliverance, okay? It can happen anytime, any moment. And whereas second coming is come together with him after tribulation, it's a judgment, okay? And then it is public. And at the same time, certain events have to take place, then it will happen. So there are different altogether, rapture and second coming. But one thing for sure, rapture will take away all the Christians on this earth. Not church goer, born again, and your names are written in the book of life. At one go, all will go. None of us can decide and say, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. So those who are left behind, it's basically, you know, they're non believers. There are some who say that, but I come to church, I come to church. You may come to church. Remember what Jesus told you? What the word of the Lord warned us? I know you not. And this is what the response was. To the word of Jesus, I know you not. 
But in your name, I prophesy. In your name, I perform miracles. Still Jesus said, I know you not. Sad, isn't it? But that rapture at one go, all will be taken up. Every believer. So what is our position? Our position is that we are in Christ. We remain in Christ. We live for Christ. We walk with Christ. You know, and we want to continue to be rooted and grounded in Christ. We don't have to feel insecure because we know that in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, all His promises, they are yea and amen. I would like this verse to be fleshed up, especially 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, everyone that is here, Everyone that is listening to online, salvation in Christ Jesus means you are on the list of rapture. So in case, if your heart, there's that uncertainty about, I'm not sure, then you are to go to the Lord and seek Him and have that special encounter and experience this reality. You cannot just base on my father is a Christian, my mother is a Christian, therefore I'm a Christian. My grandfather is a Christian. My grandmother is a Christian. I'm a Christian. Or my wife is a Christian. My husband is a Christian. I'm a Christian. Or my father, mother, they are church leaders. Therefore, I'm a Christian. Each of us, we must have that special encounter. Hallelujah. You look at all the different, different believers in the New Testament. The woman at the well encountered Jesus at the well. You know, Zacchaeus encountered Jesus while he was on the tree. Different one of them. Peter and James and John, they encountered Jesus while they were fishing. Different one of them, they have that encounter. And when you have that encounter, you have got that certainty that your name is on that list. Because God did not appoint us to wrath. It is never God's plan to exclude anyone. Anyone here at the sound of my voice, that you're not part of the rapture. It is your choice. The choice that you made. You see? And if you choose to have the encounter with Jesus now, you know, and you know in your heart, your spirit, that you're born again. You belong to Him. You have that certainty that it is meant to obtain on the salvation. For one week, this thought keep nagging me. Maybe I just share it, you know. There was this guy I read quite a while ago in the devotional material that he bought a ticket to board from London, via Atlantic, then to New York. But because he bought the cheapest, okay, and therefore he has got a bunker or somewhere to just put his head. But the rest, happily, every time for breakfast, lunch, dinner, they go for the buffet. Can you imagine for the crossing of about 14 days, it took that long, his trip. And he ate bread, inside the little room and as he sat on the bunker and the last day came the friends around him said why are you still staying here you're eating your breakfast lunch dinner your bread is so moldy then they said where's the ticket so then he showed the ticket he said in your tickets everything is inclusive the fees that you pay breakfast lunch dinner they are all inclusive really i didn't know nobody told me you should have known Finally, he went and he had his first decent meal. That was the last one. I want you to know that when you come before the Lord and you accepted the Lord, and the Lord is saying that, you are mine, I'm coming back. The rapture will happen for those who pass away first, followed by those who are alive will be caught up together. It's yours. This trip is yours. You are invited. No wonder even this morning, I sense it in my spirit that when we declare I'm deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored, you are. It is not just a confession, but truly you are. Imagine you have got a trip of the lifetime that is prepared for you. Rapture, hallelujah. For those we love that they have gone on before us, the trip that is already being prepared for them and for us, that is rapture. To meet the Lord in the air. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand. Second coming, it is the believers 
after rapture, they are in heaven. And now they come back together with Jesus. And the Lord Jesus is to come back, okay, to defeat the Antichrist, okay, and also to carry out his judgment and vengeance on the inhabitants of the earth. Now, this particular timeline will help you to know, not understand, what actually will happen to you. We don't have to try to understand. There's nothing to understand. You know, it is like when you press the waist, it will show you from here to there where your about will be. As you look at the timeline of the end times, I don't have to convince you that we are living in the end time. You and I, we know we live in the end time. But what would it be? What is ahead of us? The present church age, that's where we are. Rapture will take place. Don't have to be anxious to get ready. There isn't anything for you that you can do to get ready. All you need to do is in Christ. If you are in Christ, that trip is yours. Amen? That trip is for everyone who is seated here, who call upon the name of the Lord, who have experienced His salvation. Amen? Who will continue to walk and honour and obey the Lord. Rapture happened. The moment when all the believers, so-called Christian, okay, they are caught up. What is left behind is the unbelievers and those who didn't make it for one reason or another, because they are backslided or because they have never been actually born again or maybe they never want to uh, uh, follow Jesus, maybe just socialising, you know. So the moment when rapture happened, every believer, whether you are whichever denomination, you'll be taken up without any kind of a so-called warning or procedure. First class, business class, and then economic class. No, as long as you're in Christ, all of us, we are one class. Hallelujah! Amen. So you're caught up. Then it begins the years of the tribulation. Now, the years of the tribulation is terrible. What is this the year of the tribulation is all about? If you want to have a glimpse of the year of the tribulation, then I shall read to you. Let me have that verse, Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the heavens will be shaken, the signs of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Okay? And the people will mourn. Why? There'll be a lot of suffering. Huh? Great suffering. Okay? Now, go back to the graph, please. And so, it begins with the years of tribulations. The first three years is okay. But as it intensifies, the great suffering that is going on, so much so that it is unbearable, the second half of it. The beginning of sorrow is three and a half years. But the great tribulation followed by three and a half years, it's terrible. When does that signal the beginning of the great tribulation? It's called the desecrations of the temple, which the Lord Jesus talked about. What is this, the desolations of the temple, which the Lord Jesus talked about? It talks about Daniel prophesied. Okay? Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, standing by the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are on the house top not to go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not to go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulations, such as never been seen before the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days are shortened, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Okay? So here it talks about the abomination of desolation that start the great tribulation. What's all about? The temple, the Jews, they are holy. But there's a prophecy by Daniel that it will be desecrated. Just like in our country, we read about some people, they smear pig's blood on the fencing of the mosque. 
So it was really an offence, a great offence. Whereas, as far as the Jewish temple is concerned, nothing that is unclean should be brought in. But it was done, unfortunately. Okay, it was done. There, there was this desecration that took place. So it talks about during that year of tribulation, the desecrations will take place, then it will be the beginning of the great tribulation. The characteristic of the great tribulation, I read to you just now from Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Now, it will only last for three and a half years, three and a half years, altogether seven years. After the seven years, immediately, then the focus is the return of Christ. So Christ will return together with those believers that was caught up in heaven, and he will come and to judge the earth and to rule and reign. The millennial reign of Christ will be for 1,000 years, final judgment, then enter into eternal state. So this graph is very simple, very straightforward, very clear, talking about the timeline about rapture and the return of Christ. The next picture. Make it even clearer. The rapture and the second coming. Rapture, Christ returned for his church. Second coming of Christ. Christ returned with his church. So don't mix the two events together, okay? And it is over a span of seven years, tribulation. Rapture start before tribulations. Second coming start after tribulation. Can rapture actually take place? The answer is what? Yes. Is there in the Bible that indicate that rapture took place? The answer is what? Yes. Do you remember Enoch? The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. Is that so? And then rapture took place. Individual rapture. The Lord took him. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. And God just took him. And the next person, it's Elijah. Second King chapter 2. It talks about God with the fiery chariot took Elijah home. It has happened before in the Bible. It is a token of that which is to come. God is going to take his universal church, which is called the Bride of Jesus, during the rapture and to be back with him. And we will be given a glorified body. What kind of a glorified body is that? During the transfiguration, Christ, together with Moses, and Elijah. They were having counsel together. They got a glorified body. It is the meeting of the three super spiritual giants. The prophet, the priest, and the king. Well, when Christ resurrected, he appeared to Mary, also Thomas, and to the multitudes with a glorified body. You and I will be given that glorified body as well. In view of the fact that Christ is coming back soon, so when will that take place? What will happen? You know, when is it? Just now when we read from Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to verse 11, it says that He's coming back, but nobody actually knows when He will come back. The book of Acts tells us, the people wanted to know when. Tell us exactly when. But it's not for us to find out. It's not for anyone to find out. You know, the Bible tells us the things that God wants us to know, He revealed to us. The things that He withhold from us simply means it's sacred. It's not meant for us to venture out. There's a group of Christians, close to about 100,000. 100,000. Under the leadership of Miller. M-I-L-L. That happened many, 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 many years ago. So what happened was that he was a Baptist pastor. Can I have the picture of Miller? He was a Baptist pastor. He's very smart, very clever. He put all the Bible verses together. He has got all the time then, okay? And then he began to calculate. And then eventually he settled for the date. I think it is 22nd of October, 1884. He was very sure. He preached. The people were convinced. The people were convinced to the point whereby, you know, many of them, they sell off their property 
Many of them, they dispose of their personal belonging. The ladies cut their hair. All the frills on their clothes, they remove. Okay? And they prepare for themselves a robe. It is called an ascension robe. So that when that day comes, they put on that robe. And when they go up to heaven, they look presentable. Ascension robe. So, while that date was approaching, and something phenomenal happened that year, spring, because he set the date, he calculated, he was convinced it was October. But that year, spring, suddenly there was this comet strike across the sky during the daytime. That made the people even more convinced and in went into frenzy that they want to get ready for the, to them, it's interchangeably used. Rapture, second coming, second coming, rapture. So there was one farmer, especially, he sold off all his cow. He said, if I don't sell it off, who's going to look after my cow? So he sold it off with a great sacrifice. And so different people, different one of them, so they, they reduced themselves to have nothing, to own nothing, the male, the female, and finally, that day came. Some managed to go to the mountain top. Some cannot go that far. According to the report, they climb on tops of this apple tree so that they can be closer. In case when rapture happens, they are at a certain height, they'll be taken up. They were convinced. The day came that the day went away without any happening. So many of them, they felt so disappointed. And some returned to their own churches. But it is a lesson to be learned. We should not set any date. He is coming back. He's coming back any time. You and I, we have already obtained salvation in Christ Jesus. We have this certainty in our heart that when He comes back, the date in Christ will rise first. Then all of us will follow. Isn't that wonderful? As we go through, you know, whatever our country is going through, corruption, trial, what else? Inflation, what else? You name it. Huh? And there is this GE15 is coming. We are very unsure because all the politicians can promise you one thing and then they can do another thing. Nothing is certain. Many are looking for outside Malaysia, venture into you know, other countries to look for better employment perhaps. But I want you to know the Bible keeps telling us, pray for the country where you are. God has put you. Pray for your country to be prosperous. I believe Malaysia is still a wonderful place. I believe God's hand is still upon our country, upon all the national leaders. I believe, you know, that all of us we can still find livelihood here. I believe that our family will continue to do well in Malaysia. I believe Malaysia will continue to do well as well, even though our currency is on the downward trend, but still among ASEAN countries, we are one of the best. To God be the glory. Amen. <laughs> coming back, coming back, don't set the date because you wouldn't know. So, how shall we live? When you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, so easily we have this verse that comes to our mind. Okay? It says, verse 16, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I still remember there's a song we, we always sing because they have turned this scripture into a song. Rejoice evermore, for this is the will of God, praying without ceasing, for this is the will of God, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we always take this verse and we sing it and we stay focused with this verse. Actually, if you look at the entire chapter of chapter 5, then we understand. In the midst of, while waiting for the Lord Jesus to come back, you know, Paul outlined the day of the Lord, verse 1 to verse 11. Since I've got a bit of time, I'm going to read to you from verse 1 to verse 11. First Thessalonians chapter 5. But concerning the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourself know perfectly that 
The day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, love, helmet of hope for salvation. Verse 9. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Every one of us here, we have already obtained salvation. Full salvation. Hallelujah. With the privilege of anticipating that when rapture happens, all of us will be taken up. And then we will come back together with Him during the second coming. Verse 10, who died for us and that we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Verse 11, therefore comfort one another and edify one another just as you also are doing. The moment when He concluded verse 11 about the day of the Lord, suddenly there's a shift from rapture to everyday living. Meaning to say, while waiting for rapture to happen, we are to live our Christian life like, you know, be very, very Christ-centered. How shall we live our Christian life? Verse 12. Let's see how we should live our Christian life. Okay? Verse 12. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. But be at peace among yourself. Here it says, recognize those who labor among you. Who are the ones that labor among us? Pastor Jesse, Pastor Han Hock, Pastor Jeremiah, Pastor Ruth, Pastor Bihui, Pastor King, Pastor Ellen. There are so many of us, you know, pastors who labor among you, plus the full time staff as well. To esteem them highly, that means to say, continue to provide them the kind of a respect and support so that they can continue to lead the church in the right path in anticipation of rapture. 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. Listen, there are people in the church, even though rapture is coming, they are unruly. We are to warn them. Comfort the faint-hearted. There are those who are easily, they get fearful. We are to comfort them. We are to warn those who are unruly. Those who are weak in our midst, we are supposed to uphold them. Most of all, be patient with all. Uh, this is the test. Uh. Every time after Sunday service, as you're moving your car out, uh, this is the test. Be patient with all. Be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourself and for all. Pursue what is good. Sometimes, even at the expense of you may have to die to self, but pursue what is good for both yourself and for all. Then only verse 16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. While waiting for rapture to happen, the Bible tells us in everything give thanks. The Bible tells us pray without ceasing. The Bible tells us rejoice evermore. Verse 19, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the prophecy. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. That's the reason why the Bible tells us in this last day, even years ago, you know, there was this group, I told you, under the influence of this Baptist pastor called Miller, you know, they started to calculate the date and they have been warned or not to. The Bible says, do not believe in every spirit. On one hand, don't despise prophecy. On the other hand, test. T-E-S-T. Louder. One more time. Who are supposed to do the test? The first time, you may not know how. But if you do it second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, you'll be very good. How many of you are very good at doing COVID tests? Can I see your hand? All of you are very good. The first time, I'm not sure. I read and I read and I read. Very carefully, I spread out everything. You know? And then this is why I tell myself, I'm going to practice first without saliva. First thing, okay, I'm going to put this and then connect to that and all that stuff. And then after that, I go through the motion, put near under my lips, and then I'm supposed to spit. After that, I remove the funnel, 
and then I'm supposed to look at the level of saliva. And after that, I'm supposed to squeeze the whatever liquid. After that, I'm supposed to rub, cap it, rub. And after that, I'm supposed to place it upon that, that strip. Right? And after that, I'm, so I, I went through that. I tell you, it took me about at least about 10, 15 minutes to make sure that I do the right thing because I don't want to do the wrong thing and then get the wrong result. But once I got it right, I got it right. So it's like a breeze. I close my eyes as first step, second step. Test everything. Don't believe in everything. That's what the scripture said. We wonder why are we being deceived? Because the Bible says you are to test. No doubt, don't quench the spirit. Don't despise prophecy. But you are to test everything. Hold fast to what is good only. Abstain from every form of evil. Now verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. God is with you. He is saying that as I'm changing you, transforming you, making you to be more like Christ. You know, your whole spirit soul and body, preserving you blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm faithful. I will also do it. But my peace is with you. The God of peace. The God of peace with you, you will always have that peace. And whenever you want to say something, do something, make a decision, you're uncomfortable, the peace of God is being disturbed. You know that God is telling you, wait, don't do it. You know, let me lead you, guide you, reveal to you. More often than not, when the peace is not there, that means God is saying, say, don't do it. Abstain. Listen to me. Because that peace, it's not there. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 says that the peace of God which passes all understanding. Okay, the peace of God will stay with you. Verse 25, very important. Forwards, brethren, pray for us. Anytime, anytime, in any situation, pray. God will lead you and guide you. Verse 26, greet all brethren with the holy kiss. The holy kiss is supposed to show one thing. In the Bible, okay? More often than not, it's a kiss on the cheek. It means, I accept you. We are a family. It also means, when somebody offers you a holy kiss, means there's no difference between the elite and the ordinary. We are one. We are in Christ. So greet all brethren, here it says, with the holy kiss. Of course, today we greet one another with the holy knuckle. You know, this is very acceptable during COVID time. We just give one another a sign of, it's a form of greeting, a form of holy kiss. Right now, uh, because we understand that COVID is very, very contagious. Uh. Verse 27, I charge you by the Lord that this epistles be read to all the brethren. Paul won every believer. He says, I want you to read these epistles about the day of the Lord and how to operate, especially knowing that the day of the Lord is near. You know, you are given the assurance that rapture will take place and you'll be part of it. But I want you to read it. How do you conduct your Christian life? Submit to the leader. Okay? Help those who are weak. Be patient to all. Comfort the faint-hearted. Warn the unruly. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Verse 27, I charge you by the Lord that this epistles to be read for all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And he sings that the grace of God, God will give you the enablement to carry out while waiting for the day of the Lord at the same time, day to day, to live your Christian life to the fullest, to God be the glory, hallelujah, while waiting for the glorious experience, amen, that the rapture will take place, amen. I conclude by reading to you this portion of scripture, and I hope it will motivate you, challenge you. What shall you do while waiting for rapture? Matthew 24, let's look at verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant that whom his master, when he comes, still find so doing. Be faithful in the house of the Lord. Be faithful whatever God has assigned you, you know. As surely I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begin to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. That means live a life compromised, just like the people of the world. Okay? 
Some more. Let me have verse 15. Then the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him into and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Hallelujah. Here it implies means what? Punishment and hell. That there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What do you think the Lord expects of us while waiting for rapture and knowing that followed by second coming? One thing, faithfulness. Say faithfulness. Louder. 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 Be faithful to the Lord. 100%. Be faithful in reading the word. Be faithful in obeying the word. Be faithful in your witnessing in your attending of the Zoom prayer meeting, in the attending of the cell prayer meeting, you know, the Zoom cell, serving the Lord in whichever capacity. The key is be faithful. Hallelujah. Don't let what's going on around us distract us, but rather stay faithful, remain faithful. Amen. And when the Lord comes, the Lord will find you faithful. Hallelujah. And He will declare over you, thou good and faithful servant. Shall we stand? Father, we thank you. We praise you. Yes. Let me have the picture of the rapture as well as the second coming. Amen. I want you to commit yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, I'll be faithful. Lord, these are the two future events. And Lord, I know that I've obtained salvation through your name and I'm eligible. And Lord, I look forward to your coming back. Amen. To take me home and to take me with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Both events that are in the future. But Lord, I want to thank you. Amen. I'm part of this great redemptive plan of yours. That's right. Praise God. You are people of destiny, a people of special favor of the Lord. You are people of blessed hope. Amen. Oh, Rabawa, we should be kikukaraba. Make kikukaraba wa u. That set us apart. We are called the children of light, not the children of darkness. We are called the children of the Most High God. Amen. Therefore, we will walk according to His light because we have this blessed hope ahead of us. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hand. Begin to praise God for this occasion called rapture as well as another event called second coming. Pray, 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 pray. Call upon the Lord. Pray, pray, pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. The rapture will take place anytime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The second coming, we will come back with you. Hallelujah. To rule and to reign. Oh, Rabo Yebakarabab. But meanwhile, help us to be faithful. Remain faithful. Hallelujah. Whatever you have assigned us, help us, Lord, to be faithful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word that you have explained to us very clearly that all of us, we have this blessed hope and that when you come, all of us will be caught up to be in the air, to meet you face to face. The dead arise first, then followed by us. And Lord, we want to thank you that we have obtained salvation through your name and we have escaped this great tribulation. And that someday when you come back after the tribulation, you will take us to be with you. And Lord, meanwhile, while we are waiting for that blessed hope to take place, Lord, we want to be faithful to serve you. We want to be faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. To carry out your calling in each one of our lives. We pray for every family that is represented here, the father, the mother, and all the children. Amen. That they will remain faithful. 
Uh, hallelujah. We pray for every man and every every woman. Hallelujah. They will remain faithful. We pray for every child as well as every elderly. Lord, that they will remain faithful. And Lord, we are church of blessed hope. Hallelujah. Amen. We have this hope in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And we can live, Lord, victoriously, knowing that we are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand.